Hi, it's Wednesday. That means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Keough, author of The Ultimate Dating Guide for Widowers, and uh, today we're going to do something different on this Widower Wednesday video. Uh, for those who have been watching my videos in the past, uh, you know that the audience that I generally talk to are women who are dating or married to w widowers. And um, I got an interesting email after somebody was watching my uh, video and he says, hey, these you know, these uh, videos are great, uh, but I want you to talk to actual widowers that are out there. We have some questions that we'd like answered. We have some issues. And I said, okay, great. What questions do you have? He sent me a long list of questions. So we're not going to get to them all in this video, uh, but I'm going to address some of uh, his questions. And if you have more questions, if you're a uh, a widower and have questions you want me to address in this video, you can leave them down in the comments below. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to address, I'm going to spend the next couple videos um, addressing uh, concerns or questions that widowers have specifically. Um, so, I, But I think these can also not only benefit widowers, but those who are dating them, uh, maybe give you some insight into male or widower psychology here, and that's something we like to talk a lot about. Um, so the questions I'm going to address today, I'm going to address two of them. Uh, one is, how will I know, meaning a widower, how does a widower know when he's ready to date again? And the second question I'm going to tie into that, because they kind of go together, is what pitfalls to avoid when a widower starts dating again? What pitfalls should he, you know, not get into or things that he shouldn't do. So I'm going to answer the uh, first question, which is how will, how does a widower know when he's ready to uh, date again? And uh, the blunt answer is that you don't know until you do it. Um, let me give you a little bit of backstory on that. So most widowers, uh, soon after the death of their wife, uh, they feel the need to date again. Uh, this can be uh, this can be a matter of days. This can be a matter of months. In my case, it was about two months, about eight weeks after my late wife died. Um, I had the feeling that I, you know, that I should start dating again. And uh, and you know, having never been in this situation before, I thought there was something wrong with me. Um, I thought, why am I having these feelings? You know, I must have, I must have these feelings because um, you know I don't love the the a late wife. So the first thing you have to understand is that um, at some point. You know, again, it could be days, it could be weeks afterwards, it could be months. Um, you're going to have this feeling of wanting to uh, date again. So the first thing you need to know is that having this having this feeling is completely normal. There's nothing wrong with this feeling. Um, I it's just it's it honestly is the way that men are wired is that when they lose a spouse, they're wired to just go out and find another spouse. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing, but I'm just again explaining to you that's just kind of the way men are wired. So you have to kind of be careful about that. Uh, so, but you know, the question is, is how do you know when you're ready to date again? Um, and there's no way, you know, there's no gut feeling or something or some kind of test you can take that's going to show you that, Hey, I'm ready to uh, date again. It, it, it's not that simple. The only way that you're going to find out is to actually go out there and date again. And, um, and you'll find out pretty quickly, uh, when to, what you're dating if you're really uh, ready for it. So let me give you an example. Let me tell you about the first date I had after losing my wife. Um, so I told you that, you know, about two months after uh, my wife died, I kind of had these feelings uh, that I needed to start dating again. And I fought the feelings for several months. I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to date again. This is, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm angry. I have, you know, maybe I'm mad at my wife for dying. These aren't real feelings. And after a while, I kind of realized, well, they are real feelings. And so I thought, well, you know, I'll go on a date. So, um, you know, got online, looked up, you know, back, back in that, back in that day, um, you know, it was before phones and apps, uh, were a thing, but, you know, I got online, uh, started chatting with, um, a woman, um, who lived nearby and, you know, about, so it was probably about four months after my late wife died, I went on my uh, very first date and it was an awful experience and probably awful for her too, but really just awful for me. I remember walking up to her door and knocking on it and, and the whole time I just felt like, man, I am cheating. <laughs> I'm, I'm cheating on my dead wife. You know, I just felt like this is like what, you know, like men do who are having affairs, right? They go knock on the store and they're going to go out, go out with somebody. And anyway, so, you know, she answered she was pretty. She looked great. We went out and had lunch, and um, and and that's really all the date was. It was just kind of lunch. We were just kind of just kind of talking over lunch. But you know, while I'm sitting there in the uh, a restaurant, we're, in, we're we're kind of in this cornered off section of the restaurant, and we're talking. And 
anytime a waiter or a waitress would walk through or, you know, they'd come and sit some other people. I mean, I would just kind of look up and go, oh, who's there? And I just had this feeling of guilt. I was like, man, there is, I don't know. I, I just felt like I was cheating and that, like, I don't know, somebody was, was going to see me dating again and go tell my wife, which was silly, right? She's dead. And anyway, I just had these really weird feelings. And, and, and you, you may have these feelings, you may have a different experience, uh, but really the reason I'm telling you this story is just that, you know, when you go out, you'll kind of have these weird feelings at first. And so really the way to know that you're ready to date again isn't just to go out on one date, because I think the first date's kind of jarring, but it's to go out on a lot of different dates with a lot of different people. Um, so, you know, I would recommend three or four dates, maybe over a period of a month or so. And, but with different people. And the reason that I suggest different people um, is because that you want to just kind of get, a, you know, because you may go out with one person and, and whatever. For some, whatever reason, you're not compatible. It may be just an awful date. It may be because, I don't know, she's not the right, she's, she's having a bad day, maybe because you have these weird feelings. Uh, but I suggest going out with a bunch of different people uh, just to get a different kind of flavor of what's out there and to really just kind of say, you know, is it really me? You know, do I have these feelings of guilt every time I go out, no matter who it is? Or do I, or, you know, do these feelings kind of go away? So in my case, you know, I had this really kind of, uh, at least for me, it was a bad first date. By the way, it never went anywhere. I never really talked to her uh, again. Um, um, but, you know, I went out on a second date, I think probably about 10 days later, um, again, just kind of more of an after work, get together for dinner kind of thing. Um, and it was still kind of an awkward experience for me. Um, I, I know she kind of liked it a, a little more than I did. Uh, but, you know, it was just kind of an awkward thing, but I didn't feel as bad about it. And then about, you know, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks later, I went out on a third date with somebody else. And this date actually went a lot better. This is probably the first time I was dating where I actually felt relaxed on the inside. Now, Again, the date didn't go anywhere. Uh, I didn't think that me and this other person were very compatible, and I really didn't have an interest in her. But internally, I felt a lot better. And so I just, you know, I, I, I just didn't have these nervous feelings anymore. Um, I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't, well, I still kind of felt a little bit like it, but, you know, the feelings that I was cheating on my late wife were kind of going down. Um, and so anyway, so um, anyway, I recommend doing it just so you can kind of see you know, how do I feel after, you know, my third or fourth date? How am I uh, feeling about these people I'm going out with? Am I feeling guilty still? You know, it, are, the, are the feelings getting worse? Or are the feelings the same? Are the feelings getting less intense? And you can kind of do your own little survey there um, and, and, and really kind of just think about how you're feeling. And I think if you're feeling awful about it still, if you still feel maybe after three or four dates, you still feel like you're a cheating and those feelings aren't really going away, um, if, if they're stronger or if you feel like, you know, I think by actually going out there and doing it a little bit, you'll have an idea if you're if you're really ready to actually go out there on a date, uh, or, or really ready. Let me take it back. If you're really ready to actually maybe date again and possibly get uh, serious with someone, and that and and you know, I wish there was some kind of you know test you could take or some kind of magic thing that you could know, but I think it really just is an an internal thing, and some widowers move on faster than others. And there's no one right solution, but I think the way to find out is where you are. It may be in the grieving process and the moving on process is to go out there and find dates. Uh, again, you know, these are casual dates. I'm not saying you're, you know, these are not one night stands or anything like that. I'm not asking you to get serious with people. It's just going out there and just kind of having fun, doing activities, going out to a dinner, just in a place where you can talk to someone and get to know someone. That's honestly all I'm asking for. And it doesn't have to be an all day affair. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can just be, you know, an hour, hour, hour and a half. It could be, I don't know, walking through a park or going for a drive with someone. Uh, there's lots of things that you can do, but the point is, is that you're not getting serious with it, with anyone. You're kind of just testing the waters. And then afterwards you're going home and you're kind of contemplating and you're kind of feel, you know, you're kind of maybe doing a self about evaluation. So like, you know, after, after the first date I got home and I just felt awful. I felt completely bad. I was like, oh, I'm a loser, I'm a cheater, you know, and, and, but after the second date, you know, I, I kind of went back and didn't feel as bad and, you know, kind of, and, and then finally it got to the point where I actually was ready, where I felt like, okay, you know what, I can do this dating thing, um, you know, it's not that I was, you know, 100% ready for it, but I kind of realized that these feelings that I had, they weren't awful, they weren't terrible, and, um, I could go out and do it. So that's really my suggestion. Um, is, and by the way, I guess I would also add to that is if you don't feel 
you know, if even the thought of dating turns your stomach right now, uh, probably a sign that you're not quite ready. So maybe, you know, hold off a, a month or two and maybe think about it again kind of thing. So anyway, um, what are some of the pitfalls to avoid, though, when you go out either on these dates or, or other dates, maybe when you're uh, first dating? And I guess the biggest mistakes I see widowers make is, one, they get serious too quickly with someone. Uh, so they're going out and maybe the first or second person they're dating, you know, they're expressing their love to this person or, hey, you know, they're trying to get serious with this person. And the reason and this person may be a perfect match. But the reason I try I say to avoid getting serious uh, quickly is because internally you've got a lot of emotional uh, stuff going on and you need to kind of work through that. And again, you know, I talked about how men have this need, this internal kind of need to go out and date again. Uh, the, you know, I think that, again, that's a good feeling. It's a natural feeling. The problem with that feeling is that um, they tend to latch on. Uh, those feelings make men tend or tend to make widowers latch on to kind of the first pretty face that comes along, so to speak. So um, you could have this person and maybe you have a lot in common or maybe, you know, she's really good looking. And because you're lonely and because of these internal, this internal need just to want to be with someone again, um, you, well, I see a lot of widowers getting into relationships that they normally wouldn't be getting into or becoming serious with people they normally wouldn't be getting serious with. And that's something I'm guilty of. Uh, so after I went on the, all, all of these dates, um, during this time, I was, I was having phone calls with uh, a woman that lived in, in uh, Phoenix. And um, she was a great person. She was a friend. I had known her for several years. And... Um, we kind of started, you know, started a long distance relationship and it was normally a relationship I wouldn't have gotten into. I wouldn't have become serious with the person. She, and she was a, a great person. I, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about her. I'm just saying, um, you know, in, if I could kind of part the emotional, all the emotions that were inside of me and kind of get rid of them, look at the thing rationally and logically, uh, there, we had no business being together. But because, you know, I had this desire to be with someone because I was lonely, because I was missing my late wife, I got serious quickly with her. And so probably, you know, six weeks after I started dating, we kind of, we kind of started this long distance relationship. And I flew down to Phoenix a couple of times and she came up to Utah. And if you want to read all the details about that, it's in my memoir, Room for Two. Um, you can go and, you know, and read the uh, details about that. But the mistake I made was really getting serious with someone uh, quickly and letting my emotions cloud my judgment. And, you know, that's just kind of the way things work. But I think as a, a widower, you need to kind of have, you need to have a little bit of restraint and say, well, I'm going to go out and date again. But really the purpose of this, you know, of these, I don't know, the first couple months of dating isn't really to get in a relationship. It's for me to kind of evaluate where I'm at. Yeah, you know, I'll go out and we'll have a good time and, I don't know, have some good conversation and stuff. But it's, you know, the whole purpose of this isn't to go out and find another wife. It's to really kind of find out where I'm at emotionally. And so you see these widowers getting serious quickly uh, with uh, a woman. And the women fall in love with them. And, you know, late, a few months later, the widowers kind of wake up and realize, what the crap am I doing? Who, why am I with this person? And they've kind of led this person on. And, you know, I put a lot of the blame on on the widowers because, you know, again, they're not really thinking uh, uh, rationally about it. And it's hard to think rationally about it. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just, again, throw, throwing it out there that you get emotional about it. Um, and your sense of loss and your, and, and, and your wanting to be someone kind of overrides, um, you know, more logical things that says, you know, this person's nice, she's great, but she's not person, a person I want to spend the rest of my life with kind of thing. So, um, so that's, so that's the first, that, that's the first pitfall to avoid is to get, is to not get serious with people uh, quickly. The second one is when you get serious with someone and it doesn't feel right. And, and so again, I'm going to go back to my story with the long distance relationship with the girl in Arizona. Uh, so we got serious and I stopped dating other people. You know, we were talking on the phone every night or like I'd be driving home from work and we'd be talking and we'd fly out there and the relationship never felt right. And, and at first I couldn't figure out why it didn't feel right. At first, you know, I'm, uh, I, I was thinking, well, you know, I've lost a wife. I have a lot of emotional baggage. I'm still kind of sad sometimes. Um, you know, my wife hasn't been dead, what, five months. And so, you know, I was, ha I kind of couldn't understand why it didn't feel right. And it wasn't until a few months later when I met Juliana and uh, started dating her or Marathon Girl, as I sometimes call her, um, that I realized that, when, that the reason it didn't feel right is because the relationship wasn't right. 
And so if you're a widower here and you're in a relationship and it doesn't feel right, trust your gut. It's not right. There's something wrong. Because what I learned is when Juliana came into my life and I fell in love with her, that the feelings I had for Juliana were the exact same feelings of love that I had for my late wife. There wasn't any confusion. There wasn't anything out there of, of me thinking, you know, I don't know if she's right. Or I knew she was right. And it was weird. It was the exact same feelings, the exact same emotions that I had for the late wife. And things just clicked. And they didn't click with with Juliana as fast, but I realized that she was a person and she was, by the way, very different than the late wife. I'm not saying go out there and find a clone of the late wife. Juliana is very different than my late wife. Uh, but I realized that those feelings that I had for Juliana were the exact same. And if you talk to widowers who have remarried and have been married for a while and they have this great relationship, they will tell you the exact same thing. So don't just take my word for it. Go out there and find some other widowers who have married and moved on and you'll see that they'll all tell you that they have these exact same feelings that they had that they have for their second wife, that they have for their uh, late wife. And I'm not trying to compare or anything like that, but it's just weird. Love is love. And so um, if you're getting serious with someone and it, it doesn't feel right, take a step back and really examine why this doesn't feel right. And doing so can get you out of a relationship that you shouldn't be in, but it can save you a lot of heartache and pain and just plain wasting time with someone that's wrong. And I, again, you know, ask, ask, other, ask other widowers about their experience. Again, these are people that have successfully married again and they're happy. I'm telling you, the feelings are the same. So there you go. So don't get serious quickly. And if you do get serious with someone and it doesn't feel right, there's a reason it doesn't feel right. Um, just kind of back out of the back out of the uh, relationship because when the, when it happens and it's meant to be, guess what? It'll feel exactly the same. Um, and the, the only other thing I would mention as far as a pitfall to avoid when uh, dating again is to avoid what I call the poor widower routine. Um, if you're going to go out there and date again, um, again, I understand it's an emotional experience. It's a hard, It can be at first a very hard experience. Uh, but I, I can't tell you the number of emails I get from women who are dating these guys who pull this poor wid widower routine where they're making, you know, where, well, I'm behaving this way. I'm behaving badly. I'm treating you like crap uh, because I lost my wife. OK, don't don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't. I mean, honestly, if you're pulling that crap, you're not ready to date again. You're not ready for a serious relationship. Um, you should be able to put to start making room in your heart for this new person. And if you're if you find yourself going the poor wid widower route uh, where you're, you know, I don't know, making excuses or blaming things because, you know, of your loss, you're just not ready. So there you go. So if you're re if you want to go out and date again, um, if you want to find out if you're ready, best way to go out there is to go out there and date again, D date a bunch of different people over a, you know, over a, the period of, of a month or so. And then, you know, when you're ready, uh, and then, you know, just when you're out there dating, avoid getting serious uh, quickly. And when you do get serious with someone, make sure you're, you know, there's there's no red flags inside that you feel this is the right thing and don't treat them like crap. Anyway, if you have more questions, if you're a widower and you want more questions answered along this line, leave a comment below and um, I will get to it. Um, also, I have a, uh, don't forget, if you're a widower, I have the book, The Ultimate Dating Guide for Widowers, which you should read, which is a great book and talks about different widowers out there, um, famous widowers, uh, people who remarried, and you can you can read about their stories as well. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe. I try to do new videos every Wednesday, and there's another video on the screen for you to watch below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Wednesday.